Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today's the first Friday of the month, which means it's time for Plant Fueled with Dr. Nikki Davis. Please welcome her back to the show. How have you been, Dr. Davis? Really good. How about you, AJ? Good. I don't think I've seen you since your Belize trip. I know. So I figured today would be kind of a It'll be fun to talk about the trip. And then I'm also making my favorite recipe that we made in Belize uh, during the trip. So we made lots of food together. We, it was a cooking and adventure trip. So we made all of the meals together and this was one of my very favorites. So I thought I would share it today. Nice, I can't wait. Well, I see mustard is, is on your counter, but I have to comment, you wear some of the cutest t-shirts. <laughs> Yeah, actually, this so this was a gift um, from Vegan Dave, who is uh, Naomi's husband. And Naomi was the one that I did this retreat with in Belize. And uh, so he had this shirt that was too small for him. And so they just weren't using it. So he gave it to me. But it says uh, it's spelled pig, not ham, not bacon, not sausage. So That's pretty cute. Sweet. That's so cool. And it's kind of perfect for uh, wearing uh, at my son's baseball games because it's kind of got that, you know, baseball shirt look. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so thank you again for having me. I always enjoy our time together and just, you know, it gives me a, a good excuse to make delicious food. Um, but today I'm going to be making chickpea smash in lettuce boats. And this is a, a recipe from uh, Naomi and her website is goingveganforhealth.com. And if you go on there, she's got tons of oil-free vegan recipes, and this is one of them. So if you just search for chickpea smash, you'll find the recipe. And the nice thing about this recipe is it makes this kind of chickpea smash that you can use you know, in a sandwich or in a pita. Uh, I'm doing it in lettuce boats today, but you can really use it for a lot of different things. And then if you have some potatoes and aquafaba, which is the juice that comes out when you have uh, chickpeas and you drain the chickpeas, that's what's left in there. So if you use the aquafaba and potatoes and mix that in with this chickpea smash, you can make a potato salad. So it's almost like two recipes in one. Uh, so what I would suggest is making a big batch of this chickpea smash, you know, and then saving it for later. And then you could have it as almost like a different recipe the next day to make potato salad. I love that. She does the smash. She does the chickpea smash. <laughs> Get it like to the monster mash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I almost have to dance to it. I love um, it. Um, so okay, so and I'm gonna double the recipe because I always think if you're gonna go through the trouble of making something, you should make a lot of it uh so that you have leftovers. And so I'm gonna double this recipe. And the first thing that you do in the recipe is you need a can of chickpeas. And you'll take those chickpeas, uh, drain them, and then of course, save the aquafaba for later if you wanna make the potato salad recipe. Um, but you'll drain those chickpeas and then put them in uh, a food processor. And you want them to be kind of coarse, uh, but not really any whole beans uh, once you've processed it. And so I put two cans of chickpeas in my food processor already. Uh, so I'm gonna pull that out of here. And then basically you just want to get yourself a bowl that, you know, that's really all the processing you have to do. Everything else you can kind of chop and, and then just add, and then you'll just kind of smash it once it's in the bowl. So you are doing some smashing. So there is some fun to this. Which food processor is that? It's a Breville. Oh, look, that's nice. Yeah. It's just your, the container you're using looks a little bit different than the one that I have. This one does? Yeah, yeah, a little bit different. Smaller, yeah, it's the smaller. I mean, so, you know, you can put the S blade oh, on this. Got it. You're but putting the small, so that's why I, you're putting the smaller insert in. Makes sense. Yeah. Which is nice because when, you know, if you're not, if you don't have too much in there, it's harder for the, for the food processor to do it very well. And so with small stuff, it is nice to have that little small bowl you can put in there. And I don't know if you, you might see my little doggy walking around at my feet, my little Charlie. That's what Edith Wharton would call a heartbeat at my feet. Oh, yeah. I believe that's, that's the author. Maybe I get that my English literature mixed up, but yes, we, we love pets on Chef AJ Live. Yes. 
And if you don't see her, you'll probably just hear her little click clack on the floor. The pitter patter of little feet. Yes. <laughs> I know now that my son is getting bigger, now I've got my little doggy. Um, okay, so we've got our two cans of chickpeas. So the next thing I'm going to add is tahini. And it's three tablespoons, so I'm going to double that and do six. Oh, by the way, AJ, so, um, you know, the vegan bundle that we just got finished doing. Yes. Um, I'm still tired. The, <laughs> what's that? I'm still tired. I had, I got that week, I had 758 emails and I just couldn't check. So I've got about 400 oh done and slowly but surely. That that was too wow. Doing six shows a day for 10 days, that's too much. Yeah, that's a lot, even yep. for you. And you're used to work every right. single day. Yeah, you had a great product in it though, a kid-friendly cooking course. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to make. And, you know, I mean, that's, I'm just used to, you know, ha having a vegan kid and having him help out in the kitchen. So it was, it was nice to kind of put that together. Um, but what I was going to say is one of the recipes that you included was for the Goodman peanut juice. Yes. And, uh, and I had made those and, uh, I started this potluck in Salt Lake city a couple of months ago. And so I made it for the potluck that we just had last Saturday. And I mean, it was a big hit. They, I were, hope. they were devoured. I'll put it that way. I love it. Yeah. All right. So I just did my uh, tahini and then we're going to do some maple syrup. So to double the recipe, it's going to be two tablespoons of that. And I suppose you could probably um, substitute date syrup. Uh, do you know, is it like a one-to-one -one date syrup to maple syrup? I, I, I think it's, it is a one-to-one. -one. Now, the thing is, is date syrup is going to make a recipe darker because it's not translucent like maple syrup. I think that maple right. syrup is slightly sweeter. So, but I would definitely do one-to-one -one as a start. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then let's see, then we're going to do our brown mustard. This is spicy brown mustard. And we'll do two tablespoons of that as well. Let's see. Okay, and then a uh, quarter cup of chopped pickles, a quarter cup of chopped scallions, and a quarter cup of chopped celery. So we'll do all those at once. And then we'll add these to our bowl. Now, chopped pickles, do you just buy pickles and chop them, or do you use like pickle relish? Well, you know, I'm not, I don't know why I'm not a big fan of relish, and I really like dill pickles. So I chose to buy dill pickles, and then I'm just going to chop those up. So you maybe, maybe you don't like the sweet, the sweet one. Maybe you don't like the sweetness. I think it is probably, I really like crisp dill pickles. You know, I'm kind of a, a snob with my pickles. Oh, great. A pickle snob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a vanilla snob because I don't like vanilla extract anymore now that I've found vanilla bean powder. Yep. I'm the same. You yeah. and I are both on that. I used to be a chocolate snob, only wanting to use Valrona, but man, that's like really expensive. Oh, really? Yep. Well, and yeah, I saw when you were doing that for the Goodman peanut juice, the chocolate is, you know, something really inexpensive that you can get just at Walmart. Well, right. Yeah, for for that, for sure. And that, and I think that's fine for unsweetened chocolate, but I was talking like cocoa powder, but you know what? If all the oh. other ingredients are good, I'm not sure it makes that much difference, but, but the vanilla right. powder does. And somebody said... I, I couldn't tell a difference. I, I mean, I think it's much more potent. Yeah, I agree. Well, and plus you're just, you know, you're getting, it's just ground vanilla beans instead of being some ex extracted process, right? It's just better to get it as whole as possible. Uh, I was going to tell you, so, um, you know, this, this uh, retreat that I recently did in Belize. Um, so it was, it was really fun. There were only, so including Naomi and her husband, Dave, there were 10 of us. And I brought my mom with me 
Um, but it was just amazing. You know, we got to cook all the meals together, which was so much fun to just, you know, everybody had their job, whether you're reading off the recipe or you're, you know, chopping up tomatoes or whatever it was. Um, it was really fun because then people got to really see what, you know, what it takes to put together all these recipes and learn the different techniques and, you know, people who maybe hadn't used an Insta pot, instant pot before got to, you know, use an instant pot and see how it works. And maybe people, if they don't have uh, an air fryer, they got to see the benefit of having an air fryer. Um, so that was, that was a lot of fun. And of course we ate a lot of food that was really delicious. And most of the women, you know, came back losing weight because they were just eating really calorie dilute, delicious foods. Right. Um, and then on top of that, we got to do a lot of adventuring. So one of my favorite things that we did was, uh, we did this tubing jungle river tour where we just got all got into tubes and floated down this river. Oh, um, do you have yeah. video or pictures of you doing that? Yes. In fact, um, I still need to post pictures from the trip, but yeah, I do. I've got pictures of that. That was my, that was my favorite thing because I love water. And I used to work as a river guide, actually. So um, back in college, I river guided on the Snake River in Jackson Hole. And then I also river guided in Pennsylvania on the Yapagini River. And so I just, I love the water. I love white water. Um, I love rafting. And the tubing was really fun because we got to go through some of the, uh, a little bit of white water and then some, you know, lazier areas. Um, but it was just, it was fantastic. It was just beautiful. I mean, you know, I mean, seeing the wildlife and just being in the middle of the jungle was just so cool. Maybe you love water because you're a water sign. <laughs> well, I know with being a Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, we got to, you know, we swam in the ocean, which was amazing. The water was so warm and very salty. So you could just float in it. No problem. Um, we got to hike up to waterfalls and I jumped in into the waterfalls uh, along with a few other people and that was a lot of fun too. So all in all, it was a very, it was a big success. We all had a really good time, you know, made, made new friends and ate delicious food and all the adventuring that we did was just, it was incredible. Wow. And the trip, of, trip of a lifetime. Yes, exactly. Uh, but I am looking to do more of these kind of, you know, plant-based retreats. And I'm thinking about Southern Utah, you know, cause I live in Salt Lake city. And so Southern Utah kind of near St. George area, which is uh, fairly close to Las Vegas, thinking about doing something there. And then I also would love to go back to Costa Rica. That's one of my favorite places to visit. Uh, and then it would be so much fun to come near you, AJ. Yeah, that would be great. There we're, you. Having, we're having a conference on July 7th. Are with, you? Yep, yeah, with uh, some of the Adventist uh, plant-based doctors. So that should oh, be pretty fun. cool. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Columbus Batiste, Dr. Roger Schwell, Dr. Neil Nedley, and some of the locals like Dr. Alviera, Dr. Lyle, and Dr. Goldhammer. It's going to be at Weimar. Have you ever heard of Weimar University? No, I haven't. It's really cool. It's uh, it's a, it's a, like a, I guess it's a university. They, I think they have nursing programs. Anyway, Dr. Nedley, who's my personal plant-based doctor, is the president. So he's letting us rent it for the day and he'll be our first speaker. I'm very excited. Oh, how fun. Yep. Well, and that, that's so, it's always so fun to get together with other, you know, plant-based people. I, I've always had such a fun time going to all of the other conferences and you know, getting to meet up with you and get to spend some time with you in person is always nice. That would be wonderful because they're not having me black next year at Plant Trish and I just found out. They said they want to mix it up and have different people every year. And it's the year oh. that Dr. Goldhammer is speaking. So that means I'll never be on the same year as him. But and, oh. it's, and it's in Anaheim, which is pretty close. I love it when it's close. Yeah. I know. I thought, gosh, that would be fun to go and do that and 
try to bring my son with me, go to Disneyland or something. Yeah, take him to Disneyland in between the, and you know, the, the talk yeah, for the evening. Right? Nothing. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. All right. So I've chopped up my celery um, and I'm doing a half a cup of each because that's, you know, doubling the recipe. And now I've got my pickles. All right. And then we are going to do, oh, our scallions, green onions. So AJ, how is your weather over there lately? Is it? Well, it's cold? sunny. And it, well, it's sunny in like 60s, but it's still too cold. Yeah. Well, it'll warm up before you know it, I'm sure. I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, this is this recipe is one that we had um, when, on the day that we went up to the waterfalls, and it, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this stuff is amazing! This chickpea spat, smash is like one of my very favorite things that we had on the whole trip." So I thought, "Why not make it for you guys on the show?" Oh, I just love scallions. Do you ever put the chickpea smash in a potato instead of a lettuce boat? Oh, yeah, you totally could do that. Absolutely. I mean, that'd be very filling. It's a great idea. I mean, really, you can use it with whatever. All right. So we've got our scallions in there now. So now, um, let's see. Uh, if you want to do salt, you can. So a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to hold off on putting any salt in mine. Um, I prefer to just kind of, if I need it, add it over the top or use a salt alternative. I really like green salt um, lately. Uh, but you could do a half a teaspoon of salt. And that's that would just be for one recipe. So if you're doubling it, you do a little bit more. Um, and then ground pepper is an eighth of a teaspoon. So I'm going to put in a fourth of a teaspoon of that. And this is, um, you can make this kind of spicy if you want or not. Uh, it calls for sriracha. And the brown mustard that I used is like a spicy brown mustard. Uh, and then you also can add chopped jalapenos, which I will be doing. I always yeah. hear people talk about pickled jalapenos, but when I go to my store, I just see like jalapenos in the jar. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've tried to find pickled jalapenos as well. And yeah, same thing. They're just in the jar. And I think if you look at the ingredients, if it has vinegar, I guess, then I don't know. But yeah, I've never been able to find anything that actually says pickled. Weird, yeah. If you have to be in Texas or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'll Google um, but, it and see what company makes it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just added in my optional chopped jalapenos and then we're going to do our sriracha and then that's it. And it'll be a teaspoon of sriracha. So put in two for this one. Looking like it might snow here today. So well, then I have nothing to complain about <laughs> I when I, when I go to, um, to Google, I see like, you know, jalapeno that, you know, in the jar, but I'm not seeing how in, how it's pickled. I mean, there's recipes for it. Yeah. Love huh. to know. What the difference is, but I, I like even raw jalapenos. I don't find jalapenos to be all that spicy unless you include all the seeds, you know? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, and I did raw in this recipe today. So just chopped up raw and I did include the seeds, but I like it, you know, I enjoy the spice of it. All right, so I'm just gonna mix all that in there. So the really nice thing with this is it is very, very flavorful with everything that you include. I mean, with the potatoes and the mustard, sorry, not potatoes, um, mustard and uh, the sriracha, the pickles, 
I mean, everything is very flavorful. So that's the one thing that I noticed about this recipe that I really liked is it's just really, really tasty. You know, it doesn't taste bland at all. Okay, and so that's, that's what our smash looks like now that everything's kind of incorporated in there. So what I'm going to do is grab some lettuce boats and you can either just get, you know, regular romaine, whatever you like um, to make your lettuce boat out of. Um, I happen to find, I don't know if you've seen these before AJ, in fact, that right here, but it's the little gem lettuce from Trader Joe's. I know you go to Trader Joe's as well. It's so cute. I've never actually seen that product. I don't think yeah, it's yeah, really cute. Um, and so I, you know, I washed this one, but it's just these little, little tiny lettuce, lettuce gems. And, um, and I thought that would be kind of fun to just have these cute little lettuce boats. You know, and you can find a really good one that's a little bit, you know, easier to kind of scoop something into. But yeah, just like that. So that's kind of perfect. You know, you've got this cute little, cute That little is boat. perfect. That makes it completely perfect. Yeah, you can really eat it in it just a couple of bites with it being this small. Yeah, and actually this could be a good little appetizer. I think the way, if you use these kind of little small boats where you could spread out the chickpea smash on there and then maybe even have some other toppings on the side that people can choose to put over the top. So you can just put that right in there just like that. And you could just have it just like that, or you can even add some other stuff on top. So I also happen to have some cabbage from Trader Joe's. Um, let's see. So it's just shredded green and red cabbage with orange carrots. And so, you know, anytime you can add any, any more nutrition over the top of something, you might as well. So I'm just gonna add some of that over the top. And, and then I also it adds color too. Yeah. 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 It just makes it a little fancier. So especially if you're going to be doing it for other people. Uh, and then I'm just going to put a little bit of cilantro because I love cilantro. People love it or they don't. Yeah. I know. I, I, I think it's so interesting that there are some people that just genetically when they eat it, it tastes like soap to them. And how do you know what soap tastes like? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, maybe they swore a lot when they were a kid and they had to eat some soap. Um, okay, so here's kind of the final product. So cute little boat here with our chickpea smash. Um, I'm just going to fill up the rest of the, the uh, plate here. And then... Yeah, so this can either be, you know, I mean, gosh, this would also be an, a fun little afternoon snack for a kid, too. And I feel like you could even, um, you know, pre-make this and take it, like, on a picnic somewhere where you can easily just bring your, your lettuce and, and have, I mean, that's kind of like what we did when we were in Belize. It was more of like a picnic when we went out and did the waterfall hike. Were most of the people there, people that lived there or people that moved there? Um, the people that came on the retreat or what? Yeah, well, uh, no, that like you saw when you would go places. Oh, um, no, I, I think we definitely did, you know, there were tourists depending on what we were doing, um, but a lot of local people that just lived there. Yeah, it didn't feel overly touristy. The next time I go, I want to go, they've got some Mayan ruins there that would be fun to go and explore. Oh, carrot on the floor. Surprised Charlie's not over here. I 
how do people live without a Trader Joe's? I, I got spoiled because for almost 20 years, maybe 25, it was right next door to where I lived. So it was like, you know, I didn't have to even drive. And then when I moved, it was like, like 20 minutes away. I'm like, oh, come back. <laughs> and they're so nice there. And I, I just, I just love their product. They are so nice there. And I'm always, it's always nice when you, oh, Are you still there? I'm right here. All right, perfect. My uh, my iPad is telling me that it might get low, so I'm just gonna plug it in here. Uh, but yeah, they're always so nice at Trader Joe's. And the thing that I was gonna say is, it's always nice when you go to check out and you're pleasantly surprised that it's really inexpensive. You know, I always have a bunch of stuff that I'm buying and I'm like, how is that only $50? This is amazing. But yeah, mine, um, mine's really close to me too. It's only a five minute drive. I could actually probably walk there pretty easily. So I'm very lucky. I thought that when I, when I left LA that I had to have a Whole Foods, a Trader Joe's, a Sprouts and a Costco, wherever I lived. And I did, and I still have it here, but I find that that's the one that I can't live without, that we, that that's the one that we go to every week and that we stock up and buy most of our stuff at. Yeah, you know, it's funny because you think of it being more of like a specialty store, but I find the same thing. That's where I do most of my shopping now. I mean, they've got the Japanese sweet potatoes. I mean, they they're, there's very little they don't have that I have to go elsewhere for. Like maybe for sprouts, I'll go for like organic bottled lemon and lime juice or, yeah. um, you know, um, I get a better value on, it, on dates if I go to Costco, of course. But for the day to day, right. it's Trader Joe's. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you how it all turned out. Our, our cute little plate of our chickpea smash lettuce boats. Doesn't that look yummy? It really was um, beautiful. Yeah. So I think um, these are really yummy. And like I said, now, you know, I've made a double batch of this and I've got a ton of this left. And so you could easily store this in the fridge and then make that potato salad just by going onto her website. So Again, the recipe is uh, chickpea smash and it's on goingveganforhealth.com, uh, which is was created by Naomi, who she and I did this Belize retreat together recently. And this was one of the recipes I really loved. So it's she's got a ton of oil-free vegan recipes on her website. This was one of my favorites that we had on the trip. So I really hope that if you decide to try it, that you enjoy it. Well, thank you, Dr. Davis. Oh, we had one question come in, and which because you're also you're not just a chef, you're a doctor. And people That's true. Private consultations if they're in certain states that hopefully you have memorized uh, through Love Life Telehealth. But one came in from Bet, and she said, "Would you kindly ask Dr. Davis if she has any recommendations for someone with left-sided?" Hemifacial spasms. I've been whole food plant-based for just over two years. Interesting. Um, so boy, that's, that's a tricky question because uh, my first thought is, well, what's causing that? Has she had any kind of a workup to find out what's causing those spasms? Um, there isn't really, you know, anything that I would say that you could necessarily do to help, you know, of course, eating a, a healthy plant-based diet is going to be beneficial for your health overall. Um, but I would suggest that if you, if she hasn't had anyone take a look, uh, and, and try to look a little bit deeper as to what's causing it, um, then I would do that first. Nice. What would she just see like a regular doctor or like a, any kind of specialist? Yeah. I mean, typically that would be a neurologist or just a primary doctor internist or a family doctor that could refer you to someone else. Yeah. It, yeah. plant -based, it love life telehealth. Like, do you, can you refer to specialists? I mean, technically, yes. It, it kind of depends on the insurance. If that is, you know, if they allow a referral from us, but I have sent in referrals uh, for my patients that maybe don't currently have a primary doctor that they can use. Um, so I'm happy to do those kinds of things. Yeah, we can, you know, even though we don't, we're not technically your primary doctor is a lifestyle medicine doctor, we still want you to have someone that you can see in person. Uh, it is still, 
you know, it's, it's beneficial to have someone that you can go to if something happens where you need to be seen in person. Um, but we can still do a lot of things like order labs and send prescriptions, um, you know, send, send orders for imaging and things like that. Uh, we try to just keep things more lifestyle medicine and allow you to work with your regular doctor as well. Um, but yeah, we have those options. Thank you. And I found another question from Marlene. Okay. She says, Dr. Davis, I'm 68 and I've had type one diabetes for 51 years. I followed a whole food plant-based diet for six. I'm still having a hard time keeping my blood glucose at an even level. I'm pretty sensitive to insulin and my A1C has been around 6.1 for a couple of years. Is there a plant-based physician who is an endocrinologist I could consult with? Uh, okay. So there possibly could be. So whenever I have someone ask about a specialist that's a plant-based or lifestyle medicine uh, based specialist, I usually uh, tell them to go to uh, either, let's see, there's uh, pcrm.com slash find a doctor. There is um, plant, let's see, plantbaseddocs.com, which I think is now plantrician providers. So you can look up that one. And then I believe that the um, American Board of Lifestyle Medicine also has a list of, you know, plant-based or lifestyle medicine providers, including all the specialists. Uh, so I would just do an online search for endocrinologists because there definitely could be. Um, uh, and, you know, a lot of the lifestyle medicine doctors that I work with at love.life, uh, we work with a lot of people with diabetes, uh, type one diabetes, type two, type one and a half. Uh, and so we can also kind of, you know, walk through, uh, you know, what we typically do with those patients as well. Uh, so you can always come and see one of us, you know, between all of the doctors at Love, Love Life Telehealth, we have, you know, all 50 states in DC and international. So no matter where you are, you, you'll have a doctor that can see you. Right. And I have had two plant-based endocrinologists on Chef AJ Live, whether or not they can see patients where you live, I'm not sure, but their names, if you want to Google them, are Dr. Mahima Gulati, as I had Dr. Soham Patel, and they're both plant-based and they're both endocrinologists. If you do the show long enough, you get some of everything, you know? I know. I should, I should get some notes from you on all the specialist doctors that you're aware of that are plant-based, because that's a common question. Do you yeah. know a cardiologist, you know, who's plant-based? Well, cardiologist is probably the easiest, you know? Yeah. yeah, I think I've had, I'm trying to get every specialty for every bone, nerve, muscle in the body. I mean, I've had orthopedics yeah. and lots of cardiologists. So yeah, vascular surgeon, you just never know. Yeah. I haven't had a plant-based podiatrist on yet, so. Oh, there's got to <laughs> be one out there. There's I'm one. sure there is. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Dr. Davis. Now, next month, you'll be on before Mother's Day, I believe. So maybe there'll be something you can make that's very mother friendly. Okay. I think I'm going to have to start thinking about that, what we're going to do. Or maybe ask your mother what she wants for Mother's Day and make that. There you us. go. That's <laughs> perfect. Because My mom loves making plant-based recipes. So maybe we can come up with something together. If I could get her on camera, that'd be great. But I don't think I could talk her into that. <laughs> you know, something I used to love before I was vegan. I, do you know what a blintz is? No. It's like a Jewish thing. It's like, it's like this thing and it's wrapped. It's like often cheese, but they often had other flavors like blueberry that's kind of like wrapped and then you bake it. And I always thought like a, like if somebody could do that plant-based without like a bunch of flour and sugar, and then they, you used to make out like a like a casserole with that for Mother's Day. But anyway, look it up. Blintz, B-L-I-N-T-Z. Of course I you want Blintz's in Utah. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. I will. I will definitely look that up. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll look it up too if anybody has done their plant-based. Well, thanks so much. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time for another wonderful doctor from Love Life Telehealth, Dr. Colin Zhu. He's known as the plant doc. He's a chef. He's a doc. And he's going to be making a spring quinoa stir fry for gut health and mental health. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.